In 1941, the Navy was still flying biplanes. By 1945, it had some of the fastest, deadliest fighters in the world, the Wildcat, the Hellcat, the Corsair. Each played its part, and some nearly lost the war before it began. In the next few minutes, we'll cover every U.S. Navy fighter of World War II, their roles, their strengths, and their fatal flaws. Before the war, Navy fighters like the Grumman F-2F and F-3F still had open cockpits, fixed landing gear, and twin wings. The F-2F, built in 1933, had a Pratt & Whitney radial engine, a top speed of just 229 miles an hour, a ceiling under 23,000 feet, and only about 50 were produced. The F-3F followed in 1936 with a right radial engine. 264 miles an hour at its best, a ceiling over 33,000 feet, and fewer than 150 built. Both carried just two machine guns. By 1941, they were completely obsolete, yet they were still the front line on American carriers, a sign of how unprepared naval aviation was on the eve of the Pacific War. The Brewster F-2A Buffalo entered service in 1939 as the Navy's first monoplane fighter, but it quickly gained a reputation as one of the worst aircraft of the war. Powered by a right radial engine, it could reach just over 320 miles an hour and climb to about 33,000 feet, but only a few hundred were ever built. On paper it seemed modern, but in combat it was slow underarmed, and so lightly built that pilots joked it flew like a milk bottle. At midway, inexperienced marine pilots in buffaloes faced Japanese zeros and were almost wiped out. With losses so heavy the plane was pulled from frontline service. In Finland, it fared better against Soviet aircraft, but for American pilots, the buffalo became a symbol of how dangerous poor design could be. Its one value was teaching the Navy what not to bring into combat. The Grumman F-4F Wildcat replaced the Buffalo and became the Navy's workhorse in the early Pacific battles. Entering service in 1940, it was powered by a Pratt & Whitney R1830 radial engine, reaching about 330 miles an hour with a ceiling of 34,000 feet. Armed with four 50 caliber machine guns and later six, more than 7,800 were built. Against the faster and more agile Japanese Zero, the Wildcat relied on toughness and tactics. Pilots used the thatch weave, a defensive maneuver that let two Wildcats cover each other, turning weakness into strength. The Wildcat was slower and less maneuverable than its enemy, but it could absorb punishment, return home with heavy damage, and bought the Navy time until better fighters arrived. The Grumman F-6F Hellcat entered service in 1943 and quickly became the Navy's most successful fighter of the war. Powered by the Pratt & Whitney R-2800 Double Wasp, it could reach 380 miles an hour, climb to more than 37,000 feet, and nearly 12,300 were built. Armed with six 50 caliber machine guns, bombs, and rockets, the Hellcat dominated the Pacific. It was rugged, easy to fly, and deadly in combat, credited with destroying over 5,000 Japanese aircraft. Pilots like David McCampbell, the Navy's top ace, racked up dozens of victories in the Hellcat. It was not the fastest or the sleekest fighter, but it was reliable, forgiving, and perfectly matched to the needs of carrier warfare. For many, it was the plane that won the Pacific. The Vought F-4U Corsair entered service in 1942 and became one of the most feared aircraft of the Pacific. Powered by the massive Pratt & Whitney R-2800 Double Wasp, it could top 400 miles an hour, climb to 37,000 feet, and more than 12,500 were built. Armed with six 50 caliber machine guns, bombs, and rockets, it was as deadly against ships and ground targets as it was in the air. Japanese pilots called it whistling death for the sound it made in dives. Its inverted gull wings gave it a distinctive look, but made carrier landings difficult early on, so the Marines took it first and used it with devastating effect across island campaigns. Once the landing issues were solved, the Corsair became a Navy staple, fast, powerful, and feared. The Grumman F-7F Tiger Cat was one of the most advanced fighters of the war, though it arrived too late to play a major role. Entering service in 1944, it was powered by two Pratt and Whitney R2800 double WASP engines, giving it a top speed of more than 460 miles an hour and a ceiling over 40,000 feet. Armed with four 20mm cannons, four 50 caliber machine guns, and the ability to carry bombs and rockets, it was heavily armed for both air and ground attack. Only about 360 were built before the war ended, and few saw action, but the Tiger Cat showed what was possible. It was fast, powerful, and lethal, but too large for most carrier decks, which limited its usefulness. In the end, it became a glimpse of the jet age to come rather than a true player in World War II. From fragile biplanes to whistling death, the story of Navy fighters in World War II shows a leap in technology unlike anything seen before. The Wildcat held the line, the Hellcat crushed the enemy, 
and the Corsair carried fear across the Pacific. The buffalo reminded everyone how dangerous a bad design could be, while the Tiger Cat hinted at what came next. These fighters helped win control of the seas, but the Navy was not done. Soon jets would roar from carrier decks and change the face of air combat forever. 